Support for NPR and Where We Come From is provided by I Am an Immigrant, a project of Forward.us Education Fund. For Immigrant Heritage Month, we're lifting up the contributions of all immigrants serving in frontline roles to combat the pandemic. Hear their stories at IAmAnImmigrant.com slash IHM. We don't ask our parents enough questions about where they came from, what life was like. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, start? yeah. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Priya Krishna. I'm a uh, reporter for the food section of the New York Times, and this is my mom, Ritu. Hi, my name is Ritu Krishna, Priya's mom. And we co-authored the cookbook Indianish together about the food that I grew up with that my mom cooked for me. At what point did your cooking really start to evolve and change and sort of become what it is now? I think the biggest influence for me was just watching the cooking programs. Welcome to the French Chef. I'm Julia Child. I had really unknowingly embarked on a educational uh, endeavor where watching TV was a way I was teaching myself. It was a huge learning experience. Julia Child was probably the most influential. Today we are going to do breast of chicken in the French manner. I learned some Please. very basic so French cooking pure, techniques just so watching her, you know, how she deglazed the pan, how, luscious, you know, making pastry. And I distinctly remember watching a Julia Child program and cooking this um, it was called corn timble, I think. Uh -huh. uh, it, it has eggs in it uh -huh. and fresh corn. So I was very proud of what I had come up with. And uh, I think Tauji was visiting. Uh -huh. um, so I served it to him because he could eat eggs. This is my dad's brother. Yeah. And uh, I had over salted it. And he just spit it out. Oh, <laughs> it was most demoralizing. <laughs> This is masoor dal. It's um, this is kali masoor dal. It's sort of, right. it has a brown interior, and when you crack it open, it's it's orange. Dal is one of those things that I feel like there were points in my childhood where you had to really like force feed it. Yeah, for sure. To me, for sure. But now it's sort of my go-to meal. So you want to measure one cup? Wow, well, you measure now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to wash the lentils. Wash. I don't always wash my lentils, but I'm going to my mom them. does, and you, sh you probably should wash your lentils. So and so now, know. I'm going to measure four cups of water. Okay. And now we put the spices in. I'm going to put, yeah, you can put the bay leaf in. You're gonna put some, do I have to measure? You don't have to measure. <laughs> you, can, you don't this have to is, measure, but thank you for asking. <laughs> So that was uh, turmeric. Now salt. I'm going to put carefully measured salt. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's it. And it's going to cook for about 20 minutes. All right. So now mom now is a instant pot doll advocate. And I totally am too. I didn't even consider, you know, I feel like I grew up surrounded by, you exposed me to different cuisines, different kinds of people, but you grew up very much exposed to mostly other Indians eating Indian food. That's right. But as a twin, just barely a 20 year old, it was just one big adventure. I was not worried. I wasn't <laughs> concerned that I was going to a foreign country that was so far away <laughs> from my parents. It was just one big adventure. So. You know, I don't remember being scared or I don't remember being afraid. I didn't think what I would miss. N none of that. I was just looking forward to a new life and, you know, the the excitement and the new things that uh, the, this new country was going to bring me. So now we're going to make, well, this cook, make my mom's doctored up baked beans. Dad had some fond memories of eating baked beans on toast. I ate baked beans when I would go to London for work. And I was always looking for variety because you guys would get tired of dal and yep. all of that. So the baked beans were doctored up. So I would yeah. cook them in jeera, tomatoes, onions. 
mm-hmm. and make them sort of indianized yet they were different so we're just waiting for the cumin to we're start just, dancing yeah, just toasting it a little bit and this smells like my childhood the smell did you like register or like sympathize with the notion that i didn't want to take indian food to school partially and when i say partially i mean i think you you and meera neither one of you wanted to take anything indian but i think um you know that this is where you as an indian kid assimilating with mm-hmm. and you know being accepted and all of that came into the picture so i was i was happy to kind of evolve because one of the big things i always knew we would experience and and you know you guys as our kids would experience is this mixed you know background you know on the one hand you are being brought up as indian kids on the other hand you're living in in mm-hmm. america and the culture and the values and all of that that you are seeing in the daycare and the school is in some ways going to be not only different but may at times clash even so I wanted to do everything to make that easier for you. I feel like you are and you you were back then still an exceptional cook and I just feel like if I made something really exceptional and my kid didn't want to take it to school I'd be like do you know how good you have it? Like was there were like any feeling hey, like that? Yeah, that, that. <laughs> Lucky for you I didn't have that because otherwise I'd be forcing you to take it. So we're just toasting the seeds then we're going to add in our onion. This is like a very classic order of operations. You toast your spices, you add your alliums, you add your other vegetables, you add your pro your bean or lentils, you garnish. This is a very very simple dish. Not a lot not a lot in it, but it gets you a lot of flavor in a very small easy package. Just like most of my mom's food. All right, and that that is literally that's literally it. <laughs> Mm. Was it tastes really like? good. Just as I remember it. <laughs> Just incredibly balanced. It's sweet, it's smoky, it's spicy, salty. And, and the fresh the- fresh cilantro is yeah. is really nice addition, yeah. I think that as a kid without realizing it, I was remarkably good at compartmentalizing my Indian identity and my American identity and at sort of code switching when I was at home. versus at school. So of course when I was an Indian in an Indian grocery store, I was an Indian kid who loved aloo tikki and pale puri and aloo paratha and all of these things. But like it was just as soon as I landed at school or was at my friend's house, I was very good at sort of presenting in a way that I felt would be acceptable to that audience that I was with. And and I almost did that I did that naturally and I think that's something that I as like a people pleaser is something that I do often and that just comes naturally to me anyways but when i was a kid that people pleasing often came with letting go of my indian identity a little bit you want to get a up oh, yeah side all right so now she's putting the lime juice Yeah, let me come taste it. Everything nicely. It's perfect. Softened and cooked. This is like my dal is great, but it will never taste as good as my mom's. And and I'll never know why because she literally added all the same ingredients that I do, <laughs> but there's some kind of strange alchemy that happens when your mom makes dal and it tastes 10 <laughs> times better than your own dal. Mm.